In this video, we're going to show you how to get a wide plank shiplap look with hardy planks. We wanted the shiplap look, but we didn't like the cost of the shiplap. Um, wood's quite costly right now, and a hardy plank is not. The hardy planks here, we're at Lowe's. It's a smooth surface front, and we got $9.98 aboard, which works out to $1.38 per square foot. We found the shiplap board, and it's roughly the same width, but it's only eight feet long, and it's $13.98, or $2.99 a square foot. So that's over twice the price. So we're saving a good chunk of change doing it this way, but the downside is it's going to take a little bit longer. But if you are a do-it-yourselfer like we are, um, you trade time for money. That's why you're doing it yourself. A couple added bonuses to using the hardy planks is the durability. Um, the fire rating on this stuff is a lot better than, uh, than shiplap wood, of course. And when you're putting pictures on the wall, you just gotta drill a hole into it and just oversize the screw a bit, and that's not going anywhere. Another added bonus is it's really hard to dent this stuff. We just wanna say thank you for checking out the video, and uh, yeah, hope you enjoy it. When we bought this house, the whole interior had panel boards on it and we had options. We could drywall it or we could do the shiplap look. Uh, we went with drywalling all the bedrooms just because it kind of gives it a nice homey feel and then all the common areas such as the kitchen, the living room, the dining room and uh, the bathrooms and laundry room we're going with the shiplap look. You'll see here we had to repair some popcorn ceiling and I scraped it all smooth so we're just going to glue and nail the boards right on. Some of the tools we'll be using will be a brad nailer and I'm using 18 gauge and I'm using inch and a half. That way we're not accidentally uh, hitting any pipes or electrical in the wall. And then you just have whatever common compressor you have. It doesn't have to be anything too fancy. It can be quite small actually. One of the most important things is your uh, constructed adhesive. It says it's made for drywall, but it'll stick to anything as it's written down here. Um, the reason I went with this one is because this one was $6 a tube and the other ones were $9 a tube. When you're doing a whole house, it adds up. You'll also need this brand's Diablo, but I'm sure you can find another brand, but it's a fiber cement jigsaw blade. Uh, if you try to use regular blades in this fiber cement, it is technically a form of concrete, so you'll wear them right out fast. So I suggest this, that way you can cut around all your uh, light switches and receptacles. And the jigsaw blade obviously goes in the jigsaw. Hammer, pry, a finished nail. Now I'm just using these for a spacer. In between each hardy plank. A true level that actually works. And safety glasses, because safety comes first. More tools, you'll want your speed square, pencil, measuring tape. One more tool that's not necessary, but I have it and it's one of my favorite tools, is a laser level. So if you're jumping from wall to wall or opposite wall and you're missing a wall, you're gonna want this to make sure all your boards line up. We're gonna need some caulking. Use whatever kind you want. Um, I said just don't use the cheaper stuff because if it shrinks on you, you're gonna have to caulk it twice. I highly suggest that you have a miter saw. It'll make life a lot easier for uh, not only speed, but um, the accuracy of cuts. And then some sort of sandpaper, just so you can sand the edges. So I ended up finding a blade that was made for hardy panels and hardy planks, and it cuts so nicely. You can't cut this stuff with a regular blade, you're just gonna burn it out and cause all sorts of smoke and mess. And last but not least, the hardy plank. So it's roughly 5 sixteenths for your width and then it's uh, just over 7 inches by 12 feet. I prefer to cut multiple pieces rather than one at a time. So I'm at 109 and 5 eighths. And just to make sure it's the same all the way up. Old houses. And 
10, 109, and 7 eighths. So I'm gonna go ahead and go 109, 5 eighths like the bottom, because the trim that I'm sticking around the doors is uh, three and a half inches wide, so it'll cover any discrepancy here. But the ones on that end of the wall, they actually have to touch the wall and butt up perfectly. Always lift them vertical, because if you don't, they'll snap on you. Now from floor to ceiling, there are 13 boards. And then I already have two on the top, so right now I'm counting for 11 boards. That'll be this, basically 11 boards to the right below the door. Now that I've made my cut, I have to do all my sides with a sandpaper. Now I'm gonna do the side, because if you look closely, you can see where it was cut. There's little ridges. Now watch what happens when I put the sandpaper over. Quick one. That's all it took. Now it's smooth. And you're gonna want that to make sure it looks like you have a sharp wood edge. Always keep all of your trim ends here because you can patch them in wherever you can. Um, there might be small sections beside doors that you can make a bunch of those cuts out of. And sometimes it's just a long wall, so you can use one of those and your 12 footer. Um, either way, you can't let that go to waste. Some of you guys might not have well-worked hands with calluses. If that's the case, or even if you just want to protect your hands, make sure you wear a pair of gloves because this is fiberboard and it will dry out your hands and also kind of make them raw after a day of work. I set up saw horses because it's easier on my back. Put it on the floor, on the table, whatever you guys want, gunnage. So as I'm bringing them in, I'm gonna line up all the ends Square them all up, and I'll show you why in the next one. nicely at the end like that. So we can pre-mark our lines where our studs are before the boards come this way. I always do the corner. It should be backing behind there. And a few for the first one. So the first one seems to be to the next one then just measure 16 inches back just to know I'm exactly where I need to be this house has 16 inch on center studs the interior walls here's another one This side, this one. This one. and then on the end, one and a half inch stud, three quarter inch back. Just make sure you're in the center of the stud.
So I'm going to transfer these marks onto this side. That way it's easier to work with. So now I'm putting it on this side so it's easy to see it and because most of the houses, if they're built properly, the studs will be completely vertical and plumb. So as the line goes up with your nails in it, you don't want an oddball nail pattern because your eye will catch everything. Most of construction, or finishing anyways, is what the eye can catch. And if your nail pattern is off on every single board, even one is even worse. But the more perfect it is, the better off you are. Now what we're gonna do is, I decided for my nailing pattern, I would like it an inch and a quarter on each side. So with this speed square, you go up, make sure your line is, leaves enough room for a pencil mark there. Inch and a quarter. And on my speed square, it's six. Inch and a quarter, six. So I just go inch and a quarter up, and then six. And move my way down the line. These marks here is where I will be sinking in the brad nails. Since I've done all the way around the house already, you'll see from here, it's just touching. Now if you look to your right, you'll see that I was able to match it up. This is spanning the whole dining room and kitchen, going around the whole house. So I'm very blessed to have this line up because it's not always so nice. The problem that we'll have if they don't line up, or if you don't compensate for it to line up, if you see up here, and it matches up above the door for what I've already done following that other wall, it'll be way off. And if it's way off here, you're going to have to do some damage control. So let's just limit that. What I'm going to do with the three and a half inch finishing nail I was telling you about is I'm going to have my first spacer. I basically want the board to go underneath this one and touch this. That way I know I'm where I need to be. Now when it comes up, it's going to be basically where this one is. And if we're off just a hair on this corner, when we run our bead of caulking down, it's going to blend in quite nicely. You just don't want it to be off like a quarter of an inch or something of the sort because it's going to catch the eye. But you have a little bit of wiggle room. So the matchup on both sides of the door, I already know that from here to here is almost perfectly level. So I'm going to put this in here. see that we're level. When we're picking up the boards, put them on the wall. Make sure that we pick them up the correct way and put them on, because if you're upside down or backwards, your nail pattern will be off. Before I go down there, since I'm ready on the wall, to mount it, we're gonna grab constructed adhesive. I try to spread my line out roughly 12 to 16 inches just enough so that when it hits the wall and you nail it on, it's going to spread to about one inch thick. Knock the end. If you're a beginner, take the pressure off so that it stops squeezing out. Like that. Now if you have someone else with you, that's ideal, but a lot of times I probably like your guys' selves as well, and by myself. One nail in the bottom to hold it. Nail on the top. 
Now, because it's a long board, it is going to sag. So this is where I'm going to get the level out again. And the four foot's working better for this one. Well. Take the slack out. And the nice thing is, the nails will hold it in place until the glue sets, and you have double strength. in for the spacer for the top board and we'll just space them out through the wall okay. so we'll make sure that it won't bow as we're going down and that you get a uniform space like so all the way down and I'll throw in one more we're only trying to tap these in the studs so it just catches it you're gonna have to pull this out every single time right like I can't Get it out with my hand unless I pull hard, and that's just perfect. And now that we're on the next board, same thing. Line up to our existing marks. Six. And the quarter six. So I measured from the bottom up to here. Make sure you account for this spacing. Because you're measuring off the top of the other board, and this is about an eighth of an inch. Or else you'll be off. And it's important because the way the electrical boxes come, I go right to the edge where that little metal tab is where the screw or bolt goes in. So there's just enough room that way the tabs of the electrical outlet itself overlap this so you can tighten it down properly. Some people are good enough with the jigsaw to go at an angle and try to work your way in. But I don't like the mess you can potentially make, so... Sand the edges and the back. Before we put glue on here, we're going to dry fit that it fits on the wall properly because once you put glue on here, you can't be cutting. Right, glue all the way around those because we're only going to be nailing on one side, you want something to be holding the other side with enough strength. So. As you can see, it turned out just right. And I wanted it close enough. Probably could have had this a little lower, but it is close enough that when the screw's in there, it still has backing behind it, and that's the idea. And then your plate will cover the rest of the wall. Now I'll just be on the safe side. Every few rows, I check that I'm good. That, right on the top of that board? Yep. Perfect, all the way from that side of the door to this side of the wall. That's what we're striving for. If you can help it, don't get it too close to the edge of the board because it'll come out the cracks and then you gotta clean it out before you pop it. You'll see this bottom one was perfect, but this one is just short by a sixteenth of an inch. I used to go like this, but then I realized that by the time you get to the very top, it all balances out anyways. So if you put this one here, you will get a fatter board that'll bring you in level all the way across.
Right now we're just efficiently moving the spacers up as we go each board to make sure we're the same. If you look into this corner again, this is what I was talking about. I didn't adjust that one and it's almost perfect. It's just a hair off but as you make your way up the wall, it should be lined up perfectly. Two ways of doing this for measurements. You can measure off that wall because that's where all of them start from and find your measurements or you can just overlay it and do it this way. If you're new to this do-it-yourself stuff be very careful having these open. Um, better yet just shut the breakers off. Now I want this board to be just below this screw here, right there. So at that measurement, I have one and a quarter all the way to above it to five. So one and a quarter to five. So because we had the spacer in there and we're gonna have that nail, the nail is roughly one eighth. So we actually have to move it down that one eighth because we were going from the top of that board. So from here, from here, one and a quarter will be one and an eighth, and five will be four and seven eighths. One and a quarter will be one and an eighth, five will be four and seven eighths. What's nice about what just happened here is that the whole light switch is actually on one board and so will the plate will be as well. Sometimes it's half and half depending on what you're doing. And now we'll dry fit it and make sure we didn't mess up. Perfect, it's exactly what you want so that these tabs still touch. So now the breaker will be off. We'll unscrew these so that we can flip them in. If you see inside this hole here, originally they had a single gang here and a single gang here. So what I did was there was enough slack in the wire, I ended up moving it down, put a double gang box here. That way it looks proper and not, you know, Mickey Mouse. So since there is no live electrical behind here and it is insulated, um, I'm just going to put this Gorilla Tape in behind here, just so that when we're caulking it, it has backing. When I put the level on last time, I was just a hair off. So put this corner in and I'm going to correct what we have going on.
too shabby. Not too shabby at all. It's not perfect, but the eye won't catch it once we fill it in the cup. Now that the boards are on the wall, we ended up priming them. Um, this makes it so that while you're doing your caulking in between the cracks, it wipes up easier and it's just a nice product. So what we also did is we made sure we grabbed the paintbrush and paint inside of the cracks here too. So uh, when you apply the caulking inside of here, the uh, dryness of the hardy plank does not absorb the moisture because what will happen, and I've done it more than once, is if we don't do that, it'll separate the uh, caulking. So yeah, now that is painted in between, we're gonna carry on caulking like so. It is very tedious to do the caulking of all the cracks, but just remember the savings that you're saving. As a do-it-yourselfer, there'll be many ways to get rid of the caulking. Uh, what I used to do is I used to have ripped up t-shirts, like chunks, and I'd have a five gallon bucket of water and I'd dip it in every time I needed to clean it and carry on. It was just time consuming and I got water everywhere. So now we use baby wipes. Um, they cost a little bit, but the sanity is just, is there and it saves time. So for the amount of time it saves and the cost of them, I'm pro baby wipe. Just uh, make sure you don't get too much going because it'll make a mess on the wall. You'll see there's a little bit of waste here. I could be a little more frugal inside the wall, but I don't want to uh, have to do it twice. The cost of this little extra bit of caulking is cheaper than time. Just apply a little bit of pressure in there and you'll see that it indents a little bit. Once it's actually dry, that's just for the little flakes. Once it's actually dry, it's going to come in a little more of an indent, so it gives you more of a shiplap look. So these here, once the caulking dries, it's going to suck in, as you can see here, and it gives it that shiplap look. Now that we've filled in all the horizontal cracks in between the uh, planks here with caulking, we've given it ample time to dry. I know it says paint in 20 minutes, this caulking that I got, but even though I applied it 20 minutes ago, once you put a brush in there, you could push it around and then you gotta re -caulk it. So I'm just gonna fill in these cracks and then I'm going to go over it with my roller horizontally on the plank. Here's the finished product. Um, ended up putting three coats of white paint on here because what we painted in the cracks here was showing through. Turned out quite nice with the three coats. On the uh, casing and the trim, what we used was a high grade one by four and it kind of has nice hard edges to go with it. And then caught the edges and touched up our final line here and cut it all in nicely.